Hi there! Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to my space. So, in our last episode, mixing and mastering, that went really well. Everything sounds great. I'm happy with the song. It's now ready to be sent to a mastering engineer to, uh, and then from there to be pressed or however, whatever you're going to do with it. Now, you don't have to send it to a mastering engineer if you feel good about how things are sounding. And I'm going to show you a few things you can do on the computer before you output the song. So, just some little finishing touches. Now, of course, you could go in and do anything you want because once you take it back into Audacity or whatever program you're using, you know, whatever you want to do, it's available. So, uh, I might add a little reverb. Uh, that could happen, like just a touch. Like I said, reverb is kind of like a magic repair. Um, if there's something that just, it, you can just try it and see if it helps. Um, a lot of times uh, I might reduce the noise in the room just one more time, like 1 dB or something like that, just to make sure I'll do a noise profile sample at the beginning, something like that. I might do that. But mainly at this point, if the track is sounding as good as the one that I have now and I'm happy with everything, the main thing I'm going to do is I'm going to silence things that aren't supposed to make noise, uh, trim off the beginning so that the song starts, you know, in the normal way. Uh, there's not like a bunch of dead air time. And then at the end, you know, same thing, make sure that we clean up the end, either like a fade. Uh, I don't usually fade songs. I usually, I mean, I fade songs, but I usually end the song like a concert ending, like end on the note, and then uh, let that fade. Well, as that fades and begins to, you know, decay, uh, you might kind of find a point in it and maybe fade it out to the end and then cut any extraneous material off at the end so the song has a you know finite beginning and end. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to make sure that my levels are good too. The, the, another important step on the way out the door is I'm going to make sure I'm somewhere between like 0.9 and 1.5 minus 0.9, minus 1.5, somewhere in there. I've been lately, I've been doing minus 1.2. I read somewhere that that's sort of a good thing, uh, you know, because there's like the lust meter levels. And in so YouTube and some of the other streamers, whenever you bring uh, your track in, they might have a level that they're going to put it, you know, that, that it's going to be at no matter what. Uh, so there's all of that. So what I like to do is try to output it at like somewhere like around minus 1.2. I was reading the other night uh, people do uh, as much as minus 0.9. You know that's right up there on the zero on uh, up, up at the top of the level. You know so you don't want to go any higher or you get distortion and peaks. And yeah, like I said, the streamers and YouTube and, and uh, different places that you'll send the song are going to automatically bring it down. Uh, so I just get it as hot as I can uh, without, you know, making it sound bad. Uh, I want it to be as loud as the other songs that it, it's going to be with. So that's the other thing I'm going to do. So the first thing you're going to do, you're going to connect your USB cable and then you're going to go over here to the USB uh, control, the USB button, and then you're going to go down to card reader, hit enter, and then you should see your icon on the screen. And there's the Zoom SD icon. Okay, so I'm going to click on that. That opens the next, uh, the next bit. And then we're going to see project and system. We'll go to project, and then you'll see all the choices, all the song titles are up now. And then we're going to choose Are You, and then go to Audio and open that. Then once we get into there, now you'll notice that everything is in alphabetical order. When it comes down here to Master Triple Zero, that would have been the first one that I did, uh, and it came in at 41.1 megabytes. You know, because we're in 16 bits, so everything is is a lot less uh, heavy than uh, the 24 bit would be. 24 bit would be basically double. Uh, so we're at 41 megabytes with the triple zero. Uh, triple zero one, I mean double zero one, master double zero one is the one that I did last night. So, and that's at 41.7 megabytes. We're going to drag that one onto the desktop now. So you bring that over. And then once you bring it over, I then drag it into Audacity. You could also come straight out of here. Uh, but I like to leave it on the desktop so I can manipulate it multiple times. So let's say I make this mix and I'm not happy with it later. Instead of having to go back to the Zoom, I've got the master sitting on the desktop. I can just try again and then compare the two. And I usually find out the one I did first is better. So who knows why these obsessive, these obsessions, you know. Okay, so I'm going to take master 001, 
drag it into Audacity. Once it opens in Audacity, we take a look at the waveform for the first time. This is the entire song, and it's looking really good. I'm happy. This is what I want to see. This is exactly what I want to see. Uh, the levels look good. Uh, there's some dynamics in there. It's not like brick walled, you know, like you can see space, you know, where the drum is maybe hitting louder than the guitar instead of everything just <clears throat> crunched all the way to the top. So it doesn't look overly compressed or anything like that. Um, and I'm happy about that. And it looks loud enough, like it's going to be nice and loud. Uh, so everything's good so far. Now, I notice that I have this empty space at the beginning. So I'm going to highlight that and go through my whole process. I'm going to start uh, cutting that off. Now, if I was to silence that, I would uh, highlight it and I'd hit Command L. Uh, but there's also a silence. Um, a silence, uh, a generate. Go to generate and you will see uh, silence at that point. Okay, so, and you can make things, you know, disappear. Uh, at the beginning, I'm going to just cut off the beginning. But first, uh, if I were to do that noise reduction, I would do it now. Uh, and I, I'm not going to. So instead, what I'm going to do is just take this beginning bit and I'm going to highlight it. That's the part that I don't want. I'll leave just like a little moment before you hear the stick clicks. So I'm going to cut it there. And I cut it by highlighting, going up to Edit, and hitting Cut. So I'm going to click on Cut, and boom, it disappears. Okay, and then the same thing at the end. I'm going to cut it off at the end. Uh, same procedure. I'm going to uh, just pick the spot that I want to cut. I'm going to cut that off. And I sort of cut it off in the middle of that feedback sort of ending. So what I'm going to do after I cut it off is I'm going to highlight sort of in the middle of all of it. And you'll see that I highlighted it all the way to the end here. And then I'm going to go to fade out. And when I go to fade out, I'm going to click on fade out and you'll notice that it now fades out at the end. So that last bit is faded out. And so that kind of makes the song sound now. And you can continue to do this. Every time uh, you repeat, you can commit, you can hit command R, like say you've just done fade out and you want to fade it out three more times just to see how far it takes it down. You just hit uh, command R, command R, command, you know, command repeat, two, three, how many times you want to do it. And then you can always go back up here to edit and undo. So now I've cut off the front. Actually, I didn't cut off the front on this on the screen capture. I'll capture it where I show it cutting off the front. But um, I faded out the end. I've cu I've cut off the front. Uh, let me get to my finished. Uh, uh, and also, if you wanted to do a fade in, uh, like sometimes you might uh, the song might start with the full band playing or like some loud guitar or drum bit, and you want to come up on it and get it and make it. Uh, come up and become loud uh, as a fade in as opposed to just starting loud. Uh, so there you could do the same thing there uh, with the fade in. Uh, and so at this point I'm happy. I've got, uh, it starts where I want it to start, it ends where, it want, where I want it to end, it fades how I want it to fade on that end point, you know, on the last note just kind of fades away and decays just the way I want it to. Uh, it's the right length. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the file and I'm going to uh, make sure that the level is where I want it to be. Uh, this is super important. Um, and mainly because uh, you want your song to be uh, loud enough. You want it to sound like other tracks, like if it's in a compilation, you want it to you know, not stand out as the really quiet track. Uh, so um, what I've been doing lately is I go up here to Amplify, and once you get the Amplify screen, uh, right now it says there's a, a little bit of, there's 1.956 left to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my new peak amplitude be minus 1.2. Um, and you could do as much as, uh, actually, let me start with 0.9. See what that looks like. Yeah, so that kind of that makes it a little louder. And then um, if I wanted to undo that, I would go up to Edit, hit Undo Amplify. Let me go back to Amplify, uh, and we'll just be conservative, and I'll say the new peak amp amplitude is uh, minus 1.2. And I've seen everybody, uh, I've seen people uh, do something like minus 1.5, minus 1.2, uh, minus 0.9. Uh, the main thing is you want to be, you don't want to, you know, hit 
the top and distort and all that. But uh, I do like to lift the tracks up, especially if I've got good dynamics going. Like if everything is like pushed to the top, then it you know just sort of has the same sound. But as you as you can see, I've got some space in there, and so uh, I don't mind uh, trying to get it up to the top. And I, like I said, I want it to sound like everyone else's tracks. I don't want it to stand out as sounding more lo-fi than the other ones uh, because it's not loud enough. So. Um, also, YouTube and the streamers, they have like uh, kind of limits on how loud it can be, and they may automatically limit it. But what I've been doing, and it seems to be pretty successful, is outputting at uh, uh, minus 1.2. Okay, so after you do that, you hit OK, you get your final master. Now you're going to go to the export phase, where uh, we go up to File, pull down to Export Audio. I'm going to name it uh, Are You. The song's called Are You Ready, but I'm just going to call it Are You. And then uh, I'm going to come down here to File Type. And you'll notice on File Type that we have, uh, let's see, uh, Wave Microsoft Sign 16 bit PCM. So I'm going to output it in 16 bit. You could output it in 24 bit, that's fine. Uh, remember, you recorded it in, 20, in 16 bit, uh, but I think it's okay to uh, output it in higher formats. Um, there's also, if you go down here, you can go to other uncompressed files and it's 24 bit. Uh, they've got 32 bit float, 64 bit float, whatever. But the thing about the 16 bit versus 24 bit, any tracks that you receive, let's say you're recording with someone else and maybe uh, you're going to do a one, one man band, but you've got a drummer. Uh, maybe Kenny Aronoff is playing the part. Who knows? You, you, your, your friend down the street, who knows who it's going to be. But they've sent you a WAV file and it's in 24-bit and you forget and so you drag it over excitedly so you can hear your drum track in the Zoom and it won't play it back because this thing will not accept 24-bit. Um, so you have to down convert any 24-bit files to 16-bit to go in. But as far as outputting it, uh, you'll have to look at this up for sure, but I don't think it really matters. Um, I'm just going to leave mine at 16-bit and output it that way because that's what the file is. But other things are going to happen to it anyway once it goes into the world of streaming and all that. So um, you'll have to look that up for sure and make sure what you should do as far as the output. But I've been doing uh, either 16-bit Microsoft or 24-bit um, on the export. So once you've out, uh, exported the file, you now have it sitting on your desktop and you, uh, let's see, so yeah, you have your, your file sitting on your desktop so uh, you can click on it and play it back at any point during the day and if you decide that you can better it, all you have to do is just go back to the triple zero master drag it in and make another one. So that's why I dragged that out of the Zoom because like I said before, you could just pull it out of the Zoom, do your thing, and I'll put it and never bring that onto the desktop. But I, I like to bring it on uh, just because uh, then I can manipulate it as many times as I want and always go back to the original file. Uh, because you'll find that once you've messed with a file, it, it's not like you can sort of go backwards with it, you know, once you've outputted it. Uh, so you want to do that with the original file. Okay, so now, the, in closing, uh, I just hope that this video has helped, you know, that it's provided assistance to everyone, out, to anyone out there who's bought a Zoom. I got my Zoom for 200 bucks, and uh, Ryan uh, from Useless Against, and he's also kind enough to play drums for me live, he found one in a pawn shop for 150 and he's been using it with some, with some great success. So, uh, I highly recommend the Zoom for the one-man band thing. I highly recommend it as a way to learn about compression and um, effects and like uh, mixing and mastering. Uh, you, get, you get some experience with faders, you know, that's kind of neat. Uh, and one day you might be making a record on a knee board and you'll remember your Zoom fondly. So who knows. So anyway, uh, what I think I'm going to do is just record like a fun video of me like in here playing all the instruments just so we'll have documentation of the track. This song is going to go on to the second Dynamite Death Chair album. The first one I uh, recorded uh, in here with all the same stuff that you're seeing on this one. Uh, I did 10 songs. That record's called Die Some. Finished that record, put it out. Now I'm working on, and I played some live shows for it. I made a video. I'm going to make another video. I'm continuing to work that record even though I released it a while back because when you're doing your own thing, your own DIY thing, 
it's kind of like a soft release. And I like to think of uh, records having a long lifespan. You know, it's in the old days it was like the record came out within 30 days, it had to be going. Within a year, it was over with, and that's the end of it. And you know, forget about it. Uh, I like to think of it as being, you know, an ongoing thing that I'm going to continue to promote in my little DIY way you know, as best I can. So um, I've got about five tunes I have to write, so I've got to get in here and, and get busy. Uh, maybe I'll document the making of another one. But w what I'll do to end this is just uh, shoot a little video of me playing all the instruments uh, as if I'm recording it, and I'll put that up. And if I can think of anything else that I think would help anyone, I'll do like a bonus, you know, extras videos, uh, a video of uh, maybe some things that I can think of that might help that I forgot to mention while we were making this, these videos. Uh, but if you have any questions and if there's something I didn't cover or something about it that's confusing, uh, just again, in touch with me the usual way, uh, comments or if, with a message or whatever. And uh, I will be glad to help you know help you through it and uh, try to make it more understandable or explain uh, things better. So anyway, uh, thank you so much for watching. I like I said, I hope it was helpful. I, that was my goal uh, was to do uh, something that would make uh, the Zoom uh, understandable and help you get in there and uh, make your record. So uh, anyway, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.